Hi everyone, um, welcome uh, back uh, after the break. Um, so we're going to talk about Liverpool streets again. So uh, just following on from last week, Andrew and I and uh, Council Rabina Khan are going to hold a cross-party inquiry. The first one being uh, whopping, um, which is going to be the coming Thursday. Um, but also there's been a dramatic development. There's been kind of a U-turn uh, from Tower Hamlet's Council where they've suspended it. Um, I'll, I'll pass it over to Andrew. Andrew, what's your take on all these movements on livable streets? So, yeah, I don't know. It's sort of because it, the problem is I haven't really seen anything, any hard information yeah. yet. I understand the local councillors sort of issued something, but I haven't seen that. So we don't know what the reasons are, you know. And one of the things that we will increasingly talk about is there are local elections coming in May 2022. So are, are people's actions being influenced by those elections uh, or by other factors? I know allegedly it was the, the new uh, town hall going to Whitechapel that was a reason for this, which kind of surprises me because I've been involved in the working group for the, um, the new town hall for the last couple of years. And the assumption for that is, is basically that, you know, nobody will travel there by car except for a few disabled people. And there are some issues about that. But in theory, the new town hall pretty much will be will be car free. Um, the existing town hall is also pretty much car free as well, um, though there are some some staff who do drive in. Um, so, yes, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see what the justification is for that that pause and what the reasons are for it. Um, as far as I can tell, the other programs are still going ahead. Um, so yes, we'll, we'll yeah wait and see. Well, um, yeah, the the news the news was basically broken uh, by um, uh, so like uh, the local councillors. They saw like put it up on residents' forum. It was a letter uh, addressed to residents that was signed by local three councillors in Whitechapel Ward, along with Mayor John Biggs and his uh, lead cabinet member on on, on, on this, uh, Dan Tomlinson. So it seemed quite pretty official. Um, but, um, it, but I think it seems like there's a lot more and more pressure being put on the council to actually look at this scheme and do, do it properly. I don't think anyone's against... Uh, air reducing air pollution or having safer streets and I think that was said on the letters letter that from the residents um, that have been going around uh, in, in, in especially in Whitechapel Ward addressing their councillors but um, I think it's all like and also it seems I've had a discussion with the United Traders Action Group which is the licensed taxi drivers that took TFL to court um, and if you look at ground uh, I think the second ground the ground number two where it talks about equality impact assessment that has massive implications in Tower Hamlets as well because those statutory duties apply to Tower Hamlets Council there's section 149 of the Equalities Act which puts a duty on Tower Hamlets Council to actively engage uh, and enable people residents with protective characteristics to participate in public life so that's an active duty which i i think uh, impacts on the way these consultations have been run have you had a look at the judgment andrew and the grounds etc and see what and any comparisons with tower hamlets or implications of it so I think there are some direct implications because it also talked about EQ, EQ, sorry, equality impact assessments as well and, and the importance of, of doing them correctly. Um, I haven't read the judgment yet, but I did read a very detailed comment by the lawyer who won the case. Um, and that did seem sort of directly relevant to, to us as well. So, so in terms of um, the hearings we're going to do, have you had any residents contact you or what kind of issues do you think we're going to be up against in whopping and what what do you think are the issues going to be because each area seems to be different and the issues seem to be different what yeah. do you think are the main issues that we're going to come across in whopping so there's been a long-running 
battle over well i wouldn't say battle maybe that's the wrong term but there's been a lo long running long running argument and whopping because actually they sort of led this off because their bus gate actually preceded came before uh, livable streets and it was very much kind of the the first time that we had to deal with some of these issues and some of these questions and the background was you know like all the other communities is that they didn't like people rat running through their community so the whopping community were pretty keen on this idea of doing something to stop people kind of exiting off the highway so there's this road called the highway that kind of you know connects tower hamlets to the city of london uh, and people kind of go through it from newham um, into the city and um, because there's a lot of traffic on the highway as it kind of gets towards close to the city of london people would kind of then divert through whopping and, and drive through whopping to, to then rejoin the highway uh, further west or, or east and, and everybody, including myself, were you know fight, trying to find ways of reducing the impact of that. And the obvious solution was some kind of you know bus gate, AMPR camera control gate that basically made it a findable offence for people to drive through. And you know the local community supported that. They were pushing the council for that. It wasn't the council who imposed it on them. It was very much a local community that were driving uh, the desire for this change. And they organized uh, also when there was a consultation and there was a you know a massive response to a 2,600 people from the Wapping area alone that responded to that consultation. Uh, but 70% of them wanted residents to be able to drive through. And by residents, I mean E1W, because it's very easy using postcodes to differentiate that, that area. So they wanted to be able to drive through uh, as well as taxis, as well as buses and obviously emergency vehicles. And they also wanted that bus gate to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and what they ended up with is basically a bus gate that did not allow residents through, but was only operational Monday to Friday in, in the mornings and then in the evening during the rush hour periods. Um, very different. And, and that was a change that was imposed from above. And it's resulted in kind of disputes within the Wapping community ever since. Um, because everybody agrees they don't want rat running. But it's a question whether people and, and the important point about whopping is it kind of cuts off schools it cuts yeah. off shopping centers so you kind of got the waitrose supermarket at one end you've also got some local shops you know also on the other side of the barrier as well so it really does cut the whopping community in half from that perspective and again particular issues with disabled people um and and also with with taxi drivers because a lot of people in that area were uh, dependent on taxis or using taxis for you know completely legitimate reasons. Yeah, it it it, it seems um, just talking to uh, residents in Wapping, I came across a group of mothers, and they seem pretty angry that it seems like none of their responses were taken in. It seems like there seems to be a preset view that this is what we're going to have. And regardless of what residents say, we need to drive it through. And it seems a bit ideological that that's, that's just talking to residents is that it seems like there seems to be some kind of anti-car kind of thing to it, where it, it seems like it's heresy to allow cars to, regardless of whether they're local cars, to drive through the bus gate. And it, it, it seems it's kind of semi... Um, um, ideological or the, so like um, semi-religious, you could say, of, that, uh, of this kind of approach to it, uh, the bus gate. Is that is that what you found when 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 you've come across it? It just seems like there seems to be some ideological undercurrent to this, regardless of the facts. Well, it, the, the issue is short car journeys, and you know, I think most people agree. That, you know we don't want people from outside of the area to be able to drive through our area i think that's that's pretty common to to everybody including car drivers because it makes their journey slightly easier if their local area has less cars but what surprised me about this whole movement was was sort of the reduction in sort of or trying to reduce short-term car journeys and yes i will be the first to admit some short short some short journeys and cars are completely pointless and unnecessary and, and not required and done by people who could find other means but a lot of those journeys are people who are going to to the shops and carrying back heavy shopping they're elderly people who don't feel comfortable going on public transport anymore um you know there are people with health issues uh, you know pregnant ladies um you know so there is also lots of legitimate reasons why people drive short distances the shops i talked about in Wapping being particularly important 
and and I don't think people kind of factored in this kind of this uh, focus on the short term car journeys, because I, I, again I don't think people fully understand why some people choose to drive and why it's legitimate for them to do so, and I think you know it's kind of this blanket approach um, to try stopping all short term car journeys. I, I, I think also the geography of it is pretty isolated. Um, mm. So so if you, if you are so like elderly or have a disability or have a large family then you don't have a choice but to use the car and a, a lot of residents were upset about i know the local councils operate if you know, c certain vulnerable residents you could have a like a top-up taxi scheme mm -hmm. and uh, there's a there's a large number of taxi users there who are really upset because you know, like as far as they're concerned, it's, it's it's public transport. They don't, they can't access any other public transport, so they need to. And it's had a detrimental effect on their on their uh, life. And other local authorities have allowed, say, those kind of exceptions to go through. But it seems like in Southwark, uh, but in Tower Hamlets, it just seems like it, it's we we kind of hardcore on this, regardless of the impact is having especially amongst the elderly and the disabled have yeah. have you have you come across this on this issue yes um, and, and i think it comes back to the point we we're talking about in the last segment you know we're a very young population and it's true you know if you're in your 20s and 30s and an office worker you know the reality and you know if you're doing internet shopping you know the, the reality is you probably don't need to sort of use the car much uh, if at all it's other parts of the community um you know the older um segment you know who do and but they, you know they're not a big part of the community in, in percentage terms and and i think you know the other key point about this is you know we should have been trialing some of these options so for example in whopping you know let's trial an option whereby only e1w registered vehicles can drive through and taxis and then compare that to what was happening before and then see what the reduction is in traffic i i think there will be a dramatic reduction in traffic uh, but we never trialed that as as an option so therefore we just don't have the evidence because i have heard some people say that uh, if you if you have those kind of schemes that local people will actually drive even more than they do now because the streets are kind of empty and free and i, I just don't see that as being plausible but again uh, let's trial it and, and i think that's the solution to some of these things is let's trial some of these ideas and see what the impact actually is well, we're coming down to whopping. I, I know um, there's going to be a link. Uh, it's going to be an online virtual meeting, and and, and we're going to have the link. My and we're going to push it out. Myself, Andrew, and Rabina. Do you want to just uh, before we go into the break, just slightly talk about the format of that? It's going to be an online meeting. Do you want? Do you want to just explain and where? If anybody's interested, where can they find the link? Or when? When? When is? And uh, Andrew. Yeah, so um, yeah, so we'll publicise the link sort of uh, this weekend. It will be a Zoom meeting. Um, you know, it's the first one we've done, so I'm not sure we've, we've completely agreed how to do this format. But the whole point of this is to to listen and to hear from local people as to what they think about all of this stuff, both the pro, because within popping, you know, there are people who are pro the existing bus gate, there are people who want to change it. So there are a completely you know mixed set of views within whopping. And we kind of want to hear from everybody. And it's also we want to hear from people about with ideas about how to improve things. You know, we're not going to go back to the old days of no controls and cars and whopping because that's not what local people, I think, want. Uh, we need to find some compromise. Well, well, finishing off, look, if, if you're a local resident in whopping and you're passionate about this, if you feel that it's had an adverse effect or if you feel that it's a wonderful thing, the way things are being run, Come, uh, give your submission to this uh, inquiry um, and because we need to get to the bottom of it. We need more facts, uh, uh, more light, less heat on this issue of livable streets. Uh, whopping uh, next Thursday. But we're going to go to a break. And after the break, we're going to talk about um, HMOs. That's houses with multiple occupancy. But uh, we're just going to go to the break now. Mm -hmm. 